everybody. Go ahead. Anyway, so welcome to the uh, CV Fiber Workshop for um, anybody who wants to learn about everything we've been trying to do. Anyway, I am David Healy, the Calus Delegate, Volunteer Delegate to CV Fiber. Sitting on my left is Alan Gilbert, the Delegate from the Town of Worcester. And to my right, we have Linda Gravel, who's the Delegate from Waterbury. And then we have Janiel Smith, who's the executive, the uh, executive director of CB Fiber. Kurt Grunling from Waitsville Champlain Telecom. Lee Cheney from Waitsville Champlain Telecom. So we have CB Fiber, and then Waitsville is our operator. So as, as we go along, we may have questions about how that's going to work. But what I'd like to do is start with um, <clears throat> the question that I get all the time. Chris, when am I going to get, get it? So I, I want to give the little short history because as much as everybody has been wanting this, it's been a long whole, whole road for the volunteers who have been working on this for five years. Um, so just to give you a little you know, brief, because you know, we had a lot of startup and planning organization meetings. We didn't know where we were going to get money. We didn't know how we were going to do what we were doing. So we finally got there and we hired an engineering firm to help us do the design, and they're still helping us manage the construction. And then we had a, an operating partner, which is WCVT, and then we had to do a lot of hustling for grants, which took a bunch of time, and give testimony before the state to get it, but we're happy that the uh, American Rescue Plan provided the state of Vermont enough money to put in 200 million into fiber in Vermont, of which CV Fiber got 23 million. And and every contract we have, which are numerous, requires bidding, review, and hiring. So if you want to know why things take so long. And then you can have every weather problem in the world happen to you. So winter building didn't work so well for us. So we were really slow to start this year. And um, finally, in, in central part of Calais, um, it's ready to go. Um, we think we'll be lighting it up by the first week in August for the, the first zone. And the second zone should happen pretty much, pretty quickly after that, probably um, a month, maybe six weeks after that. So if you're in CLO1, which is Central Callus and part of East Montpelier, that's first, and then a chunk of Worcester and a chunk of East Montpelier going next. And I'll show a map in a minute. So in terms of engineering design, this is the hard part to explain to people. It's not a town boundary based system. There are five zones in Calais, not all of them being opened or built at the same time. So that's going to be some people who are in Calais who say, what do you mean I didn't get it? Well, I'm sorry, but it's the way the engineering went. Um, East Montpelier has three zones, uh, Worcester has two zones, and Middlesex has three zones. All of them have a different sequence of construction. And then you add to that, The um, come on. The uh, <laughs> the construction itself is what I just said. So there you got it. That's my slide on timing. So these are the 24 districts that make up the CB fiber network. So if you can look at Calus as a green, that's the CLO one. So that's the first district that's being served. And then the next pink one to the left, West Callis and part of Worcester and part of East Montpelier is next. And then so forth, going to Worcester and Middlesex. This, um, before I get too carried away and people ask me, so where are we now? This is as of last Friday. This is where we've strung fiber. Um, I know there's a lot more, there's about 60 more dots that should be on there running down County Road but they're not in there. Um, they will be probably next week. But you can see the green area is pretty well covered. I think there's only about five or six more houses that will be passed in East, in East, in, in Calais. And you can see our contract is already working in, in Worcester and in Middlesex. And the notion was they're moving to where they can quickly attach fiber as opposed to slogging through a swamp like they've had to do in Calais. Um, it's been pretty rough going for them. 
Anybody seen our trucks around town? Yeah. Yeah. One was stuck on the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah, the flood, right? Yeah. That, that was the splitter truck. The splitter truck. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, could you talk a little bit? Please? Could what? Talk a little bit. Talk louder. Okay. So anyway, CB5 is locally owned, managed broadband service. It's a municipal entity comprised of the we volunteer 20 towns. So we're, you know, we can go to the bond bank, which we're planning on doing. We can, you know, basically the only thing we can't do is tax you. So all we can raise money by is through subscriptions. So it's operated by, it's going to be operated by WCBT. Um, so, so far we've received $23 million in construction grants from the state of Vermont. 800,000 total between town uh, American rescue plan money with a state 50% match. So Callis put in 200,000, the state put in 200,000. So Callis has got an extra 400,000 to make connections. So that's all good news. Um, the problem is that the, mess, the cost to run the, build the whole ne network is about $60 million. We now have determined in the last month that we're gonna run out of money probably by November. I don't know if that's a good guess. That's a good guess. And so we'll, we know that we'll only be finished construction and operation of the, um, the Calus well, CLO1, CLO2, RSO1, RSO2, and am I missing one? RSO2. Oh yeah, CLO3, which is Woodbury. And Woodbury hasn't started at all because Hardwick Electric is not made their poles ready for us to attach to. And this Our is a problem. RSO1 is Middlesex? Hmm? Middlesex. RSO1 and RSO2 in Middlesex. Middlesex. Um, so we have a few problems with make ready, which I forgot to mention is one of our series of problems. You have to apply for permits and then pay the utility the money to prepare the poles. And that's either a new replacement pole or it's um, moving the cable and the telephone wires down so we can we, for some reason, we have to be at the top of the pole. So that's taken a, a, a big hit on us in terms of time and money, in terms of slowing down things. So, you know, from our perspective, you know, why should you sign up? I don't know, how many people have uh, consolidated DSL? Yeah, okay, well, you're, de you're desperate, <laughs> you're desperate, you're desperate. Okay. So, I mean, you need better speed. <laughs> um, we also hope that we can provide top-notch customer service would be another reason we would advocate, you know, subscribing to us. We don't have any gimmicks, there's no, there's no contracts. Um, the price is what the prices are. Um, so locally owned, local customer service, and we need you to help us succeed. So you want to know how the, 70, the base rate was $79, where that number come from. So we had a five-year financial model done of building the network how much it was going to cost, how much it was going to cost to run. And it came out we needed per customer $90, assuming that only 40% of people took the service. So it's sort of a longer term thing. Uh, on Tuesday night, I was asked, is the price going to come down? Well, it isn't going to come down in the near term. Um, we can tell you that much. Um, but but maybe it's not after, going up either. It won't go up. That's what we can tell you that too. So that's sort of our back end story. So how do I get, what do I get? Well, you get the highest broadband speed we have. So you have 100 over 100, that means 100 up and 100 down. Um, and if you got four, if you only have four right now, that's quite a bit of difference. Um, if you have, um, the connection will be free. Um, the the, the um, provided is a distance limit. We're providing 400 feet of connection aerially or underground, but we're not providing the conduit. So if you have an existing conduit that might work, and when the Waitsfields technician comes out to your house, show them what you got, and maybe you can use that, or maybe not, and I'll let them explain if you have any questions on that rather than me. But if you have an aerial connection, it's 400 feet or less, it'll be no, no problem at all. Um, and that's covered. And what if it's more than 400 feet? It's a dollar a foot after 400 feet. Well, the installation fee is part of the 99 bucks, right? Yeah, but you didn't say it. So okay, it's well, free. okay, <laughs> then it's a 90 dollars startup, startup charge. It includes 99 dollars. 99 dollars. 
that, so with is that, that, is that 400 feet from the last power pole? <laughs> or, from the or go ahead. Oh, okay. lead. So it is from the, la the last takeoff pole to your house. So where your power service comes where, to the house. Where the, where the, um, the existing the transformer is. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I want a little stub. There's two of us on that little stub. Yeah. Um, so if there's a shared, um, if it's less than 400 feet from that main takeoff pole, then you're good. The main pole is the one way down on the road, not the one up by the house. Um, you said the transformer is right. Is yeah, the transformer up by the road or up by the stuff? Up by the house. Up by the house, and it'd be up to the house. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Even if you're single transformer up by the house? Yes. Okay. And when the technician gets there, he'll go over that stuff, okay. and if there's anything that looks like it's not you know, going to jive, he'll let you know. Okay, great. I got a phone call today. I yeah. think I wanted service, and I didn't know the price, so I said, I think so. I don't know. Uh, they're probably, they're probably yeah. in the neighborhood. So, uh, they are in the neighborhood because we passed one of our guys on the way up, and we were like pretty surprised. They're making calls um, to make sure that you've signed up for service, mm -hmm. and they what they are what they want to do is try to get somebody scheduled. They'll call you to get somebody scheduled to come out and do the site visit, and that site visit's really important because then they can tell what the footage is going to be. They can give you any pricing if it is indeed going to be more. They'll look at your existing buried service and conduit that Consolidated might use. They'll pull, they'll tug, and they'll say, yeah, we think we can get something through there, or if not, then they'll say that you're probably going to have to put conduit in um, for us to be able to pull something through. And, and this, this building is actually a pretty good example because David showed us, our technicians were a little ahead of us, yes. uh, and the fibers actually already pulled through the, the, the conduit into, into the back room here. Right. It's not terminated or obviously active because the network's not active yet, but it's actually, they were able to, to come off the, the main line pole through the existing conduit. And it's all coiled up in the back room there, so, which is progress. A lot of moving pieces, and as we get things done ahead of time, it goes quicker once it's all ready. So. Why, why don't you describe what, what they get when they get an installation? What they get? Yeah. Okay, so um, this sort of simulates what a cabinet looks like out in the field. And although it's, this goes in the cabinet, and this is the electronics. This feeds a, a boot out into the field called a splitter, and there will be 32 customers out of that boot. Um, or eight or 10, they, they have different size depending on how many customers are around that. And then that fiber will feed to a box that goes on the side of the house. And it's similar to this, but it's a little bit bigger. And in that box, I'll make a splice and I'll run fiber through the house into this device right here that needs power. They'll need commercial power in the house. Usually it'll go in the basement by the electrical panel or somewhere, but it doesn't have to go there. Is go that a no, This is called an uh, optical network terminal. Uh -huh. So this is where the fiber terminates to. So that's the actual laser. This is the laser, yeah. So out of this box, there'll be an, a blue ethernet cable that will go to this box. That's and this is your router. Okay. And this is your Wi-Fi device. And while the technician's there, they'll go around. They have tools to measure and see where you have Wi-Fi or where you might want Wi-Fi that you don't get today off your DSL lines and, and all that stuff. Um, they'll go around the house and say, we can do it all with just this device right here. Or they say, well, this isn't going to reach the back you know, porch that you might want to sit there with your laptop. So they can try a bigger device or this device has extenders. And they can give you prices. They're, they're all listed, all the prices and, and stuff like that. And they'll do a snapshot. Um, we have these things called pronto forms. So they set it up. They read the levels. They go through all that. They document it on a form that we save. So if a trouble comes in later down the road, we can bring up those forms. They, they do pictures of where the devices are set and all the levels. And they'll say, oh, well, when we put it in, it was a, at a neg 21. Now it's a neg 40. Something's different, you know, and they can figure out much quicker what's going on. So does one of those devices go in each room where you want Wi-Fi? No. Um, like I, uh, from this box, this ONT uh, Ethernet cable will go here, and this will light up most homes, oh. the whole home. Yeah. You know, so what I'm going to the Wi-Fi speed is the same as the incoming laser speed? Well, the incoming laser speed. So always when you have incoming laser, if you take an Ethernet cable and plug it into here and into your laptop, that's going to be your highest speed ever. It's always connectivity-wise. Right. Yeah, but the cable doesn't limit it, you know, 
Well, it could, but that's why everybody uses Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi speeds. So, so, so the, the yeah. one thing, Wi-Fi will never be as reliable and it will never be as fast as a wired connection, right? You can come off that fiber optic into a wired connection and that is by far always going to be your most reliable. It's just the laws of physics, okay. right? Okay, what is the Wi-Fi speed? The Wi-Fi speed? What's the degradation? Well, the, the, uh, yeah, um, uh, so, so these are all the latest, it's the standard, it's all Wi-Fi 6 equipment, right? So you, it's, it's only as good as your device and the location you are in your home in terms of the Wi-Fi. We will optimize it, obviously, for yes. the best performance. Depending on the size, the construction of your house, you may need additional mesh Wi-Fi access units that are available to propagate that signal, you know, to every room you want, to every place. I mean, some people want it out to the, you know, church shack in the backyard. Are, that's all doable, but right, it takes equip additional equipment to make that happen. But they'll test and show you what your Wi Fi speeds are prior to them leaving. Like he says, it's always the equipment. You could have a 20 year old laptop that only does, you know, 8 meg. Yeah. Or, or, or your iPhone, or your right? IPhone. I mean, you know, just so just for. Uh, uh, illustrative purposes like you go through you know just your average sheetrock wall you're losing half your signal strength of your wi-fi signal like if you look at it with a uh, wi-fi analyzer uh, and then everything is an interferer right everything from your washer and dryer your refrigerator the radiant floor heat uh, the fieldstone fireplace um, low e glass uh, any metal roofing all that stuff horsehair plaster that's all reflective material that degrades an unlicensed yeah. Wi-Fi. That, that doesn't mean it's not going to work. It's just going to mean it may yeah. take an additional device or some moving the devices around in a, a particular way to make it work. To maximize that performance. I saw a couple hands. Uh, yeah. David, you want to, you know everybody, so. Well, no, I, I didn't see who was first, so. Um, just a quick one about getting the phone call. Yep. So will we be hearing C on a CB fiber? Worker, just because of security. Yeah. Um, or, or is it going to be? A I believe that they'll represent themselves as CB Fiber, and it's a Waitsfield Telecom employee that will come out. And on all of our employees, is that what he did? Yeah. Because yeah, he received the call today. I got a call today. It was uh, Waitsfield Telephone that came representing CB. Fiber. Yeah, it came on the phone. Yeah. And all of our employees, so if anybody does come to the house, our employees from Waitsfield will have a CV Fiber ID badge with their picture on it, okay? And then on the flip side of that, I think on the back side. Oh, we have, we have, right, they have three. Yeah, we have three, three different badges. ones, but they well, will have four. a badge, and if you um, request for them to show them that badge, then they're, they know that they need to show it to you. So, so, so we are working in the area, as, as Lee said, we're doing two things. One are the pre-installation site surveys, as well as uh, running drops, uh, some drops now, just trying to get ahead of that initial demand so that once the network uh, is all ready to go, we can, we can, it'll speed up the installations. Because one, one, one piece is these, the drops up here, as you can imagine, with, you know, uh, off-road, uh, most of the, uh, the pole lines being off-road, they're a little challenging. Our techs have already been in the rivers, right across the woods, <laughs> through the woods, over to grandma's house, back, back over, right? It, it, it just takes time. So and a drop, there, it goes from the utility pole to your house. Yeah. That's what a drop is. Yeah, can you tell me the price of, of digging a concrete necessary per foot? <laughs> we don't have good estimates on that. Yeah, no, no idea. So. It can range because any contractor, you know, can come in and put a two-inch conduit in, and he's going to bill you whatever. We can't come up with accurate. So you, you don't dig yourself. You're you can dig your. You, you can, can dig it yourself. Your own yeah, you can do your own conduit if you'd like. And on the website, there's specs and everything that we go by for people that just want to do it themselves. Okay. I don't mind. Yeah. How far is it? So people can dig it. Don't How worry. You can dig your own. Hey, wait a minute. Whatever it is, sand. Okay. <laughs> How deep does it have to be? The uh... um, 16 inches. Yeah, that's quite a big Yeah, um, and those specs are on the website. Right. I may be, it may be a foot. I think I, I have them on the table yeah. over there. Are you going to have a list of reputable contractors? They're on the yes. website. They're on the website. Yes. They're on the handout too. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, if anybody does have a question about a certain employer or somebody that comes knocking at your door and you're not comfortable, certainly call the the CB Fiber number that's on the website. You'll get our customer service, and you at, just ask him. 
is do you have anybody out in our area working? And they'll get a hold of the pertinent people that we can uh, identify and say, yeah, we, we have people out there just to keep you guys safe if somebody comes out there. I have questions. I wasn't clear. Uh, we're at the top of a five-pole spur off of Greenmount Pond. Does that- Where? What road? Off of uh, Gosling Hill Road, at the top of Gosling Hill Road. Which uh, town? He's walking yeah. You know where uh, Stillbrook Road is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh, God. Across the road. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Across the road and up the hill. And so I'm wondering, I know you have trucks going down in 14, I've seen doing yeah. stuff. But we're a five pole spur off of that. I have two questions. Number one, is that going to count as you have to pay the distance? And number two, does this, the problem I have, we actually have Xfinity, and the problem we have is that it's signal slows. There's four houses on it. Okay, and the signal slows as you get to the top. So our speed at, at night really declines. Is that a problem with, with, with your now, fiber? You have your own, your, your dedicated fiber link back to the equipment. So you have your own. Once it gets to the equipment, it shares. But it's not like cable. It's not like coax. Okay. Um, the whole the whole road's not sharing the same signal. So, so I if you were a hundred over hundred, you're going to get a hundred over hundred. Yeah. No, no matter have, what time. We have a slight problem in CLO one on Route 14. You do. That uh, Green Mountain Power gave us a bill of three hundred thousand dollars to replace the poles that are in the swamp. You're and kidding. then they told us, oh, next year we're running it underground on Route 14. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, we'll wait and we'll put conduit on Route 14. So that stretch, and I'm not sure it yeah, affects you or not. It, it probably will because yeah. it, it, it was, before Stillbrook Road, it does go through a swamp because yeah. we did a lot of praying in the rain. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so anyway, and, and it, it, that particular stretch, and since Renee is here, is here it's screwing up East Cowboys Village. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, everybody there. But so you're in the way? No, it's not. It was like ridiculous in the part of Greenland Power. Okay, go for it. Uh, just a question about your modem and Wi Fi. Yeah. How strong is it compared to the consolidated modem Wi Fi? So, so, so you don't have rabbit ears on that. Right. There's no. Yeah, everything's got internal. I mean, these are, these are, these are, these are newer, this is the newest newer version of equipment. Yeah. yeah. That being said, they're all the same power levels. The FCC, because it's unlicensed spectrum, they all cap. So these are uh, 2.4 gig and 5 gigahertz as well. Uh, 2.4 only has three channels, propagates really well. 5 gigahertz has lots of channels, so cruising lanes, it's higher bandwidth, higher frequency, but because it's higher frequency, it doesn't propagate as well. Um, so, so it uses it both. Each it's, more. It, 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 it's a combination, right? Again, it depends on your device, and it will negotiate, right? Yeah. With with whichever devices are connecting to make sure that signal's optimized. Yeah. But it's again, in terms of coverage, it it's really our depends on. technicians that when they're in the house, they're going to be going around, you know, measuring, and yeah. they'll say, well, if you want it to be good signal here, you may need another device here or not. Or they may say, well, instead of having this with three different uh, extenders around the house, he, they may say, let's just go with this one. So. And then the other piece is where it's, it where it can you know be logically placed, right? You know, while you know the best location might be the middle of the living room, that's not always practical. Right. Uh, so right, while that might buy, be the best provide the best coverage, right? It's still a negotiation in terms of here's where we're going to mount it, here's what the coverage looks like. And, so that's um, one of the things we said about the technicians going out there is don't leave when, and have somebody be unhappy about their Wi-Fi coverage because that simulates their broadband. The, when they call in, my broadband sucks, my fiber, no, that's not the way it is. It's if your Wi-Fi is good, then you're going to be happy. And they won't leave the house until it's good. If you, if you, before they get there, they're going to test it when they get there to see what you got today. And then when they leave, it will be much better than what you have today. Nice. We have, we have Ethernet cables running all over the house. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Sometimes we turn the Wi-Fi on when somebody visits. Yep. So are we going to be able to access the turn on, turn off with the Wi-Fi ourselves? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it, it'll take your Wi, it'll take your cable right into the back of that. Yeah, one. I know all about that. Oh, I want to turn it off. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. 
So we, we have Starlink, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering how, do you know how the distribution or capacity of that compares to their central router yeah. distributor? Because we have a fairly large house, yeah. and that gets to every room in the house, including a porch, out on the mm -hmm. patio. I wouldn't be able mesh? to do that Pardon? until... Do you no. have any mesh routers? No. 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 The one. In the kitchen, and it goes... Everywhere. They're, they're all similar because they're all using the same fabric yeah. reference boards, yeah. you know, that come out. Um, there's only really two manufacturers that make the underlying They would get out there and they would the Wi-Fi equipment and they would know right away so, if it. I it, assume it's similar. I it's, it's, really it's, it's absolutely going to be similar. the notion that if you have one of those, it'll likely do your whole house. Yeah. And that's what we find. We find that. But we do 90%. find, right, there's always extenuating circumstances sure. for construction size, where garage, they want you know? it. Right. So it really, you know, where we, we find stuff on the fringe is where people have challenge, like car chargers right. in the right. garage, right. et cetera. Go fix them. So we're all on Comcast. I want to get off. Um, but the question is, do you also do telephone, or is it just... Uh, yes. Okay, yes. who's the telephone person but over there? Really? You're going to offer telephones? So that's one yes. of the questions. The other is, I think, um, Jane just brought it up, is the safety. I, I'm one of these ones that I don't want Wi-Fi in every room. You know, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, that was good. I mean, David may, but I don't. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, is there a way to, and you just said there was a way to. There's a way to turn it on and turn it off. There's not a way to segment it. No, that's okay. Within the house, like to have it on in the kitchen, okay. but not in the. And when you talked about the laser, I didn't understand what the laser as compared to what we have now. Right. Well, the laser is just a. a this thing puts out a light on onto the glass, onto the fiber. Right. Fiber optics is all optical, so it's all light. Wait, wait, wait a second. Fiber is actually made up of glass fibers. Okay. Yes. So it only transmits light. Yeah. So yeah. when you said laser, you probably should say. Yeah. Light. So in this piece of fiber. It's got protection bending, so you can do that. But there's a, a hair piece of glass all the way through it. And how this equipment works with this stuff is it shoots light out. And the laser is what shoots the light out. So yeah. yeah. So really, that if one the, the goes into the theories of radiation, which a lot of people yeah. feel, it, the, the laser is better than yeah, I mean, what the, maybe Compass would use anyhow for that. Well, right. I mean, they're using RF, right, yeah. which is, uh, uh, you know, a radio frequency, you know, over that coaxial cable. In this case, right, it's, it's using light waves, pulses of light over the optical fiber. Okay. You, did, you had a question on telephone. Telephone. So we are offering a telephone package through Waitsville Telephone. It's uh, $29 a month. And you have the option of including a battery backup, or is it required? No, it's optional. Optional. So the battery will allow the phone to work on an out power outage. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the advantages of that. So this is what the batteries look like right here. And it's optional. You can even have a battery just for your broadband if you want. And this battery ha has the options to you can stack them. So one battery, eight hours, but you, we can stack them up. You can get multiple batteries for 20 hours. So do we have a generator? Can it? Oh yeah, a generator. Right. See, that's the best. Well, that's the best. We'll need a battery. We'll need a battery. Generator. Generator. So, so does that mean we can eliminate our landlines? That you need so certainly much can now? eliminate your landline. Keep your phone number. Yeah, you would port. We, if you were consolidated today with your yes. phone, you would port your number. We would port it, and you could save the same phone number, and um, you could do away with their service. And then off the back of this device. Yes. There's a phone port right here, and we would just run the cable into that and your existing phone lines that go through the rest of the house. Yeah. And the technician would do that when he's there. So it's lines, it's not battery, it's, it's like Comcast is actually. Yeah, so if you get phone service from us, the only way that service is going to stay up if the power goes out is if you have a battery or if you have a generator. And that's the same thing with Comcast. It's the same too. with Comcast, yeah. yep. Um, Traditionally, when Waitsfield uh, gave uh, phone service over our copper lines, we fed that service from the phone office, which has big, big batteries. And that's why your phone would never go out of service in the olden days. But over fiber, we can't run power over. We can't feed over. power over. There's no the copper we could. So that's the difference. Why would you need the service package on the battery? 
There's a service package? For maintenance. So these batteries, like, so <laughs> they do go bad. Um, they'll, they'll run out of charge. Um, and if you're running it on battery all the time, the life of this will, won't last, you know, a year. Um, so with the maintenance packages, we'll come out and replace that. I believe that's what. Yeah. And we'll come out and replace it at no charge. We, we can monitor these batteries in the central office. So we know when the batteries are going bad and all that. And we'll preempt, go out and change batteries or give your call and say, hey, it looks like your battery's bad if you're on that maintenance plan. But if we lose power for three days or four yeah. days once a year, yeah. that might make a lot of sense to pay for that service contract. Yeah, it's totally optional. Yeah, it's optional. It's totally optional. Um, you know, even the battery itself, if you lose service, is all your other devices going to lose power too if you don't have a generator? You know, um, certainly your phone gets Wi Fi. And if you can rely on your phone to make calls, it, it makes sense to have a battery backup, I think. You know? Our phone doesn't get Wi Fi. We don't have, we're in a hole. No, but over the, um, so with your cell phone, once you get good Wi-Fi, you can make calls over Wi-Fi with your cell phone. I got that. Right, I'm just saying the power's out. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. The power's out, we can't make calls. Right, I get it. Um, do you lose, um, when you lose power, would the, uh, do you lose your internet? Because it's glass, not? Um, no, so if you, if you lose power and you have a battery, your broadband would stay up. Okay. Well, so, so, so the, the caveat to that, you are accurate in that, right? You need a battery backup for the ONT. For the ONT. And, as well as, you know, the router would have to be either A, tied to that battery backup, or if it's in another location, it would need, need another right. backup. Right, so yeah. the battery powers this device, which your phone surface is coming out of, but this device would need some kind of backup. That's what I want Yes, to for your internet, yes. Good point. Start one more. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, what is the life on the cable that you're putting up this glass, and how does it stand having trees land on it if it's on <laughs> I'll give you, the, I, I don't know about the longevity, but we're running this fiber on 10M stainless steel strand, which I'm not sure there are too many trees that are going to knock that over. That's right. <laughs> and I'll hold it up. So, so, wait, 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 wait. What? The strand actually wraps around the cable, uh, wraps around the, the... The strand. Yeah, the strand holds it up. Okay, that's why there's like two pieces that, that are strung on the telephone pole. Now, the longevity of fiber, last fiber, it's been well, yeah, I mean, so the first, first fibers four, we ever put in yeah, are put still in the network. Yeah, I put fiber in up over, um, from Waitsfield over to the Champlain Valley in... Uh, 1987, 86, and that four fiber is still running today, and that goes up over the mountain. So yeah, if it gets broke, you know, it's easy to, I won't say it's easy, we splice it back together, we fuse it back together and all that, but um, it doesn't wear and tear like copper, you know. Um, I think back in the heyday when I was younger, I remember down in Springfield, Vermont, they put a copper cable out in the parking lot and a fiber cable out in the parking lot, and all the vehicles ran over it. And the copper cable degraded first over the fiber. <laughs> Even though it's glass. The it's, squirrels chewing on it? Squirrels like fiber. They do. They do, But they chew, they chew copper, too. Yeah, they chew, but we'll eventually, you know, we'll get mice, mice like fiber. So we're, they'll get in our cabinets every once in a while, and something will go down, and we'll go out there and, you know. It's a car. So many of you received a postcard with our price schedule. Um, if you didn't, um, you know, the, low, the uh, 100 over 100 is 79. The 500, 500 is 99. Residential, one gigabit over one gigabit is 129. And then the residential, two gigabit, and I should have been here, really using a lot of bandwidth, it's 199. Now, those are the residential rates. We also have business rates that are slightly higher than these. I don't know how many people are in business here, but they're also on our website, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and I had a question the other night that I'll answer here because it's not been asked, is um, are there any subsidies? And at the current time, CB Fiber doesn't have any 
subsidies to offer. But FCC has a program for low-income families and individuals, $30 a month, and the individual has to apply for that. You have to have service and then apply for it from the FCC. Which it's $30 off. $30 off, yeah. Off, not $30 total. Yeah. No, $30 off. off. Yeah. And, so if you're already on that, how do you transfer it? From have you had experience with that? I have not. Uh, that's a good question. I'll have to look into how that, uh, how the, if you're already qualified for ACP, how you uh, migrate uh, subscribers. It's, there's probably a process directly through you, Zach. So. It would be good to get that to you. Good uh, question. Very every day, the big right. So the other thing is, yeah. for people who have to have long lines and have to get involved with paying for this dollar per foot and you have an extra thousand feet, we actually will give you a zero interest loan over a few months that would bill you monthly. So that's another option in terms of that. In the meantime, the state of Vermont is looking into equity and block band and coming up with ways of finding ways to subsidize the low-income people in the state. I don't see anything on the near horizon for that, but it's in the, the uh, requirement to get a, the next chunk of the infrastructure money that the Congress passed two years ago, which Vermont will not see for about another year and a half because of the bureaucracy of giving out money. And so we anticipate that there'll be a requirement for some sort of equity for people who sign up. Um, well, we don't know what that's going to look like at this point. Um, when can I subscribe? Well, this is now old. Oh, no, it's correct. CLO. CLO. I see CLO to late July. So here it is, late July. We opened up signing up for subscriptions yesterday. CLO two days ago. Two days ago. Anyway, it's now. Um, we, if you try and have any difficulty, let us know, right? Right. I want to hear about it. How do you so, find out what zone, you, what area you're in? Look on the map and yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're, 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 you're in two. We're in two. We're in two. We're in two. <laughs> so anybody going West Callis and Worcester and most of East Montpelier that's in, because each of us have multiple zones, but County Road and East Montpelier to Horn of the Moon is in zone two. So you can sign up. CLO. There is a link from our homepage yeah. so that you can get right to the map and take a look at your own address to see right. if you right. are close. Okay. So that, that's just a new thing that's come up. Um, on that map, it shows you the area that we, in CLO 2, there's a stretch of, El, of uh, Elmo Road in Worcester that we have to wait for Green Mountain Power to fix the poles. So there is a piece of. Um, CLO2 that isn't being served right now. And then the other thing is... Just tell them we don't own the polls. It's okay. Um, <laughs> we don't own the polls. Um, <laughs> we also do not serve off-grid properties. That's a stipulation in the money we got from the state. We, you know, if you have a way of getting to us and underwriting it, great. Because we have designed the whole network to serve everybody, even the off-grid locations. The question is, there's no poles, and so pretty much it's an underground solution. Um, so, and then we'll be moving into the rest of Worcester and Middlesex later in the year. We were hoping to do Cabot and Marshfield this year. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, hopefully we'll get it done, get going on it next, early spring next year. But, um, can, can I ask sort of a technical question about the cable? So if we see, we've watched the guys putting the cable up <laughs> around our place, and you know that steel cable, is the somehow the um, lighted wire in that no, cable? No, it's spun around, the, the cable's attached by a spinning. Yeah, so, so there's a two-step process. They got the strand, right. the strand is Lashing put up wire. first, that, and then they have lashing wire that goes around the fiber in the strand. So they got a, a tool that they pull with a ATV or whatever, but they'll pull that tool and it spins and it spins the lashing wire around your your cable. So there's two wires on the end of the fiber. Yeah. 
basically. There's there's a, a steel wire, big steel wire that goes between the telephone poles to hold and up. And that's what you see go up first. That, right? that's, that's what goes what up first. Yep. Yeah, and then the black fiber will go on that, and that black fiber is tied to that steel with a lashing wire. And the lashing wire is really thin, just wire, and they use uh, like a figure eight kind of like a Chinese basket. They go right around it, okay. and that's what holds it up. So sometimes that lashing wire will break and the fiber will drop a little bit and then we'll have to come back and relatch it. But the, the strand, the big strand, that doesn't break. And how soon after you put the big strand up do you do the, the second step? Well, that's, it all depends, it depends on, 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 on the, you know, in this case, use this working up here. It really depends on what areas that they're, they're running in. Um, and then even beyond that, right, once the, once the mainline fiber is up, they have to come back and the splice. splicers come back in behind that, which also takes time. So it's, it's really it's a multi- Almost a four-step process. Step process. Yeah. No wonder we've seen those guys around so much. Yeah. 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 And this, is, and this yeah. is a tough area this to work in, just area. because of everything being yeah, off-road. Yeah, 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 you all are yeah. familiar. It's, so it's, it's, this CO2 goes all the way up to, for those from Calus, goes up to Woodbury Mountain Road. And that'll be the end for this zone. And that's all got both wires on it, Correct. ready to go. Well, re the ready to go piece, right, with with a caveat, you know, there's still work in the network that oh, needs yeah. to be the, done, the yeah. uh, electronics need to connect to the world, the testing, the so the physics. I always like to put the, the caveat out there, there's still some critical milestones, right, that need yeah, to be Yeah, in fact, the done. power hasn't gone to the cabinet, right? You <laughs> need power. The substations, right? Yeah, substations. at the substations yeah, where the, the cabinet is. The substation needs right. power. Yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. Wonder how do you when you're going cross country when you're going cross country from <clears throat> your pole to a house with conduit? How do you deal with the ledge that you inevitably are crossing all over the place? Uh, what happens? Yep, yeah, 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 that that's, happens. <laughs> That's when the conduit's maybe an inch and a half on the ground. <laughs> no, we do realize that, that they try to go in areas um, when they go, if they see it's all ledged, then they may say, and uh, some of the um, techs that may call, if you have buried service, they may say, would you mind if we did aerial to the house? If, um, if it's feasible. If, if, if it's feasible, if there's a pole that they can come off of, they will ask that um, to save money if they indeed see that you need to put conduit in. But that is, uh, I mean, is you should problem. see, you should yeah. see some of our very jobs, yeah, where we we have to, you know, directional bore. Uh, we don't like those bills. Yeah. So is yeah. one better than the other? In regards to running from a pole to the house. Uh, so, so we prefer aerial just because a, it's less expensive, it's quicker. You're going to get your service quicker. Uh, you can also restore it if there's a cut. Yes, um, very. Quick. I mean, fiber does get cut. Obviously, if it's going off road, it's not always a big deal. But rocks move. You know, people dig. Uh, um, but aerial, you know, yeah, it's, we prefer it's, aerial, and and that's why we ask because we know it can be quicker. But it would be the thick steel cable in. No, it would. Um, so it's self-supporting um, uh, drop. So no, you won't have a strand or anything unless the unless the distance unless the distance are. is too far. And then they may have to put up a. Uh, it wouldn't be a. But the process we described before was really the mainline cable. The the right. drops is you know it's a much thinner yeah. material. Yeah. It's a smaller diameter fiber, and it's uh, designed to be self-supporting for you know if if everything's book distances. Obviously, there's always extenuating circumstances, which might mean that you have to run a piece of strand because right the poles are too far apart or or whatever for the spec of the cable. But okay. our techs look at that when they come out for that pre-installation site survey, so they look at all those. And they make special self-supporting <coughs> drops. You, when, when you have a uh, two and a half foot diameter maple, and you better run that smaller wire by it, how do you do that to be sure that the odds are good that you're not going to be back there? Yeah. They, they work out their directions of how they bring in that drop <laughs> any way that best suits it where they hope that there's no damage. And, and that's not to say it doesn't happen. You put a J-bolt in your tree, <laughs> you know. We've seen it. Yeah, we've seen. And, and we've also had homeowners out there on some of these installs that say, you want that gone? 
let me go in and get my Husqvarna steel chainsaw, and there you go, it's gone. This is Vermont, right? <laughs> yeah, this is Vermont, where uh, all the farmers yeah. had this going out through their fields, and it's now trees that big. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah. exactly. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, now those are valid, so wait, valid points. There's a question. Linda's right got right a question. So an installation, so, so somebody comes out and talks to us, and say we, are going to keep our phone and our TV, because you don't do TV, with Comcast, but we're going to go with you with internet. If later we want to go to do a telephone, can you do that, or do you have to do it right away? Also, who works with the other company, to, like to get off the internet from Comcast? So you would have to cancel your service with Comcast. Yeah, that would be something that you would have to do. Um, we. If we get out there and Comcast has got their drop pulled to the conduit, we will not pull that out. Um, but if you canceled your service and you pulled it out, we could use that to pull our fiber through. Um, that has happened. Um, we, as far as phone service, anytime you want, once your service is in with broadband and you want a phone, you can order it anytime you want. And they would, if the tech needs to come out, I think they may do a trip charge um, if they had to do some wiring or anything like that. Um, or they could say, go ahead and plug a phone into the back of the ONT um, and your services should be there. So there are at least, um, I know of three internet television services that have all the channels. There's DirecTV, net, uh, not the satellite one, the um, YouTube TV, um, Sling has everything but the locals. Which one? Sling has everything Sling, but the okay. Sling TV has everything. And they but range locals, from, yeah. you know, they're in the $50 to $80 range. I mean, they're not that cheap, but it's cheaper than a TV package from Comcast. Comcast. And you can cancel them and restart And they're streaming TV. And you can restart those Yeah. And you want yeah, to see how they work with it. Yeah, there's no contract it. fees. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. The same thing with consolidated. I mean, you know, I don't know what kind of contracts they have, but you either have to cancel it or ex let it expire before you sign up. Um, but what I have up here is what the steps for signing up are. You need to go to our website. And if you can't get to our website, call the guys. Yeah. yeah. And um, choose a package to meet your needs. So they're all on the thing. You, you click, click, and put them into a shopping cart just like Amazon. And they agree to the terms of service. And the technician comes out and does a visit. That's what we've just been talking about. And after you've signed up and agreed, they'll come up and do the installation. And at the same time, whether the Wi-Fi in your house is adequate or not, that's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking that question again. Um, a few months ago, you said that service would come to East Cal's Village around July. Yep. So now, what do you say? It wasn't raining. It's no, no. This is the green It's going to be at least a year from July, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're not money in November? Oh, that's a good question. Are we going to finish the CLO one? When Green Mountain Power puts its. Yeah, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll finish CLO one. Put it on a director for that answer. CLO one, CLO two, CLO three, RSO one, and RSO two are budgeted for what we have. So. So when Green Mountain Power finishes and we put our conduit down to 14, we'll get to the village and to your, your poor road. I can see all O2 West cows. Um, when do you think you'll be built out? I, by the way, I signed up this morning. Yeah. Um, but there's no, it's, what do you think? Eustace will be finished with O2. The Dallas portion. Well, we can't light it up till they're all till they're finished. I'm just thinking about getting it all strung up. CLO two, they're telling us is the end of September, but we we don't really sure. know for sure. Yeah. It's got yeah. stuff. It, we have to splice everything out. And we have to get the release of the as built. Mm -hmm. So there's certain. So they can't do the other thing until Eustace finishes its job. Uh, I saw another hand up tonight. Oh, yeah. We got an email saying that our address was uh, <clears throat> okay, and will we please register? So I went to register, and they said, well, you're already registered. 
So I tried to register again and it wouldn't let me because yeah. we'll be registered. No problem. So uh, yeah. and all my other question is do we need to call uh, this phone number to make an appointment? And how can we be sure we're registered or not registered? We are working on the descriptions because there's been lots of confusion on the word register. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So when you come to it and it says you this address has already registered. It means you've signed up for notification, but you haven't signed up for service. So you have to come back when your zone, CLL1 and CLL2, are now live zones for signing up for service. <coughs> and you have to go through the registration process all over again. So you type in your name and, and address all over again. Yes. And you type in your address all over again, and it comes through, and it actually puts you into a shopping cart where you can select the type of service that David was talking about, the 100, 500, 1 gig, 2 gigs, will be on the page, and you can see them and select them and put them in the shopping cart. I'll try again. I, it wouldn't let me go further, but I'll, I'll try again. What, what said, zone are you in? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I'll get She's in one. Or two. Here, here with Dermot? She's up yeah. the road. Yeah. Okay. She's in one? One. 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 So that just got opened if up. If you'd like to try it, we can try it over here after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After. that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it is. Super. Yeah, this is zone one. This here. is zone one. Yep. And that's. This goes from here, from Kent Museum to North Callis. Yeah, I'm on Jack Kills. So. Oh, yeah, you're in zone one. Cool. Lightning Ridge. Lightning Ridge is in zone one. Most of the light, no, Lightning Ridge is on zone one, in zone one. She, she's not finished. Who? Yeah, I just want one question. When, when do we uh, print tell consolidated uh, that we're done? <laughs> What's your fibers live? What's your, we better let her. Once our technicians leave and you're happy. Yeah. Don't do it until your technician says right. you're yes. on. Yeah. yeah. That's when you break out your champagne. Um, when you sign up, there'll be a delay between, you know, I see. when you register for it or sign up or put it in the shopping cart on the website. There'll be a delay because the service guy's got to come out and look at and, and check your site and give you an estimate if there's any additional charges. You want to say yes, no, I want to continue. Then somebody comes out and actually makes all the connections. But you don't get billed until you actually have live service in your house. Mm -hmm. I see. So it'll be a preliminary visit and then a An installation. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Do your prices include all the taxes and the no. no. Do we know what that's going to be? Do we know what the we don't I, we don't have an exact amount. Do we have a pers like a like an estimate for the, say it's seventy nine dollars? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we 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 need to. Yeah, we yeah, need, need, need to. I don't want to. We don't have. We don't have. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's, how, how much? Is it's it? not. It's <laughs> exactly. And is it less than ten dollars? Oh yeah. Okay. Per month. <laughs> for, for what? Taxes. 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 So we just we just passed through, right? What is mandated by the state and federal government? But so do you get a call after you sign up, or do you sign up? Have to sign. I mean, do you have to sign up to get a call? You have to subscribe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You have to get the internet service. You can't just right. register. You have to actually right. select a service. To get the call. The to get the call right. that they're going to come. And then you will call us. And but to return okay. time, yeah. roughly, once you are at signed up that you want the service, how long will somebody contact you? Uh, it depends on where you're at, right? And where the network build is, is, is the big piece. One. So one. we're working those and now. Right now we're working those. And Rolf signed up really early. <laughs> um, it's a simpleton's question, but I'm curious why Linda and I don't know you, Sandy, Sandy, are concerned about having Wi-Fi throughout the house. Is there an exposure issue? That we we are about? concerned oh, about no, that. That's, yeah, that's 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 I have been concerned about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, is, is there some not? sort of like radiation or carcinogenic? Well, it's radio waves, so it's if you're using a cell phone, I don't worry about it. Yeah. It's not ionizing radiation. Right. No, so there you go. It's changing brain waves all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually have we've covered most of my slides. The one thing I wanted to talk about was. This came from my wife, who can't tell the difference between Wi-Fi and cell service. And so I thought I would explain that 
Wi-Fi is not cellular service, but if you have Wi-Fi, your cell phone will work. And so since nobody in Calus has cell service, you more than likely will be use Wi-Fi calling on your phone. And so you will have cell service, but it's not cell service. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that one. You have to, you know, I don't know if every phone has it, but you have to go to your settings and search for Wi-Fi calling and just slide the slide of our on. And it should work. I've been using it for, I don't know, five years, seven years, a long time. Um, thank God for that. And it actually, it was in the interest of the cell companies to do that because they don't have to share the, uh, right. the bandwidth on their, on it's their network. It's a lot of on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which is fine. But that, I think that's my, my last thing I want to talk about. On our website, we have a complete list of all the TV options you can look at and you know decide if you want to not sign up with Comcast for that. But the other one is, um, aside from just signing up for regular phone service from Waitsville, you can actually use the internet for voice over internet protocol using a, a third party system called, I, had, I use UMA, O-O-M-A, it's five dollars a month, and I've had it for like 10 years. The other one is Vonage, and I believe there's a third one out there that's popular. There's lots of them. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so there are other options out there. and the, what I like about Uma is that I get, if I'm not there and the phone rings, it sends me the voicemail to my email. And um, it's a pretty nice service. Um, so those so are my... Instead of having the phone service directly through you, we could get this other kind of phone service? If you want, yeah. You have to be a little bit of a geek. Yeah. yeah. Well, I am. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> and like I say, it's probably, I think I pay $5 a month for that. Okay. Yeah. When you go to look up uh, the app and you got a hundred over a hundred, it won't take you very long to get at it. You won't have to sit there and watch <laughs> it spinner. And you can change it. You can port your current phone number mm -hmm. to the, these services too. And you have them listed on the website? I, Some of them are. Some I, think of them it, are. I think it's on the website. And the we have a frequently asked question okay. page on the website. And uh, we'll keep on adding information to that as a result of meetings like this. Because I think we've had at least five questions that we don't have answers for on a frequently asked question yeah. page. And our, our helper over there is in the corner. If she's taking a few notes for the notes. frequently asked page. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, there any other, are there any other questions? I know it's been painful for you, painful for us. <laughs> Boy, okay. Well, going back to the beginning of your presentation. You talked about the money that had come from the feds yep. and uh, you know the status of your build out of the different zones. Is there money to complete the work to do the entire service work? No. We're what? in the process of writing, looking for a Vita loan right now. We're also looking at getting private capital to borrow. And we're, we will be going to the bond bank probably next year to complete the work. Also, we just B issued yeah. $229 million to Vermont. So we don't know what piece of the pie we're going to get for that. But because we are Vermont CUD, we expect that by first quarter of 2025, we will have to So it's a long, I mean, that money, I mean, the, the lobbyists tied that money up so well that the process that once we apply for a grant, it can be challenged by anybody. <clears throat> and however long that process takes, and then so we don't expect to see any of that $229 million until the first quarter of 25. But in the meantime, we'll be borrowing money to uh, continue. We do not want to stop building. Um, that would be the worst. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, Calus alone was $6 million, I believe. Um, so it's not cheap. And also subscriptions will have less support. Yeah, no, the, the yeah, money coming in actually having operating money for a change as opposed to just money going out. And that $6 million is just the, 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 the mainline construction, right? That doesn't include any of the drops or, you know, electronics and equipment. The, uh, I, I, should, I say callous, but I really meant CLO1. Is there an installation fee? $99. $99. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm late to the party. That's okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, have, have you guys already run the lines in callous yet? Or? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Well, uh, you missed the slide that shows the five zones in Calus. Okay. So depending where you live in Calus, 
two zones are now open. Okay. Um, the third, fourth, and fifth are next year at the earliest. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Valentine Road. I'll oh, you're on Valentine Road. You're that guy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, another one. Uh, why don't you take this phone call? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's in the position of a hydric electric, not fixing the poles for us. Oh, uh, okay. So, but we're waiting to, they're, they're planning on doing it. Okay, yeah. I saw them surveying yeah. their, the, you know, CB5 or something. <laughs> oh, yes, it's coming. Yeah, no, we need a hydric yeah, electric truck doing something. Okay. We yeah. don't own the poles. Yeah. Right. And we, so, pay them, we pay them $11 a year per pole. Oh, I see. Plus the cost of fixing the fixing pole. Fixing the pole. Yeah. It's about $8,000 a new pole. We already paid them. Yeah, we paid okay. them. We yeah. paid them, and they haven't fixed them yet. All the time. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. if you know anybody in Harvard, yell at them. Yeah. yeah. So, so when when is the service itself actually going to be available? In Seattle, one which you're in, which if Harvard get finished, it'll probably be next month. Okay. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. We need those poles, though. <laughs> so that one will be delayed. Yes. So, a couple yes. of big picture questions, but first one is. Do you feel this is going to be sustainable and growing and financially supported? Because I know East Montpelier and Callis and Woodbury and Woodbury, we're not big towns, we're not Montpelier, you know, which I'm sure has a zillion different cable companies going through it. But the physical network itself is very resilient and lasts a long time, so there's lower maintenance costs for fiber. Um, and so once we get it up there, we expect it to last. And I know somebody asked the question, how long does it last? And the answer is we don't really know, but we think 30 to 50 years probably. Um, and then sustaining it, it so sustaining it is, is, is affordable because it is so resilient, but there is an expectation so that it'll be a sustainable system. Financially sustainable, the model we ran is based on 40% of people taking the service. So I think that's the other part of your question. Right, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're like, okay. So <laughs> my concern right now on that number is I think for CLO1, which the majority of people in this zone have DSL, we're probably going to get higher than 40%. So it won't be an indicator of what happens in CLO2, where there's a lot of Comcast. Yeah. And then just on, on that other piece, I mean, TV Fiber, I think made a fantastic uh, decision to partner with a, a third generation family of a 119 year old company, right? So we've been here so, <laughs> since they don't seem a long, long time away. ago. Talk <laughs> okay. about that a little bit. Who is the company and what's on it? Sure, Waitsfield and Champlain Valley Telecom. We're a third generation uh, uh, family owned company. We've been operating here in Vermont. Starting obviously in Wakefield, Warren, Warren we're down in Faston, but we've been operating there for 119 years now, same family. Uh, in 1994, we purchased the GTE property, it was Contel GTE in the Champlain Valley region, and that tripled the size of our, our company. We're now partnered with CV Fiber as well as two other communications union districts, Maple Broadband and NAK Broadband, to help with doing what we've been doing for 119 years, and that's bringing telecom services to rural communities uh, throughout Vermont. So the other question I get asked is, can they handle the growth? It's been challenging. <laughs> but yeah, we're up, we're up to the battle, and uh, we, we are, we're hiring. If you have any young folks that you know, are interested in getting into the telecom business. But uh, the, thing, the one thing they do know that the maintenance on fiber is, is a lot less than It's the a lot less, the but um, the trees do come down. It does take stuff down, we have maintenance contracts with people that take care of it. Um, yeah, we've been doing it a long time, we know what we're doing. Are you related at all to Consolidated? We no, keep, we're not. We no. keep getting different Thank stories God. from that. Yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> Consolidated is a publicly traded company, right? That's the old Fairpoint the assets awful, that became, right. <laughs> see, it's, yeah, and now they're trying to rebrand as Fidium Fiber, right, in the, in the state. Yeah. Um, did I lose it? Yeah, I lost it. <laughs> It'll come back. <laughs> These have been great questions. Great questions. questions. Yeah. Really great Fantastic. questions. Fantastic. John, you did not speak. Okay. Mine was just, how is the relationship with WEC good? It's really good. Fantastic. Fabulous. Okay. Because, okay. yeah. no. I mean, they, since they initiated back in about 1935 or whatever, they know every swamp, ridge, <laughs> so, ledge. Bye -bye. No. I know last Thursday I was driving on County Road opposite Rick Hopkins' house 
there in the swamp with Rick Hopkins' canoe, putting fiber up on the poles. I mean, on the, on the That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> so, so have you, have you WEC has worked it's with awesome. you physically? WEC, WEC did all its make ready work faster than we could construct. They were okay. phenomenal. And, but then you had your workers doing the Yes. The yep. Steel cable. Yep. Uh, so, so the mainline cable is actually uh, being done by another Vermont company, Eustace, yeah, uh, that you've probably it. seen. Yeah. Uh, We've partnered with several different companies to get this done. Yeah. Right. And and WEC actually hired some private contractors due to the the uh, poles they had to replace the transmission poles because it requires a really big skill. Yeah. Okay. So they did that. Big boys. Yeah. Yeah. No, been Thank fabulous. you. No good questions. One at the back. So, so the, the actual go live date is sometime in August. The for, for CL2, where you are, Mac, it's probably September. September. Yeah. We got a few connections. We got but you'll do some. all the, the initial mm -hmm. stuff before then. That's yeah. go live. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah it's the go live date. You've yes. got to have had your house yep. say, signed yep. up. You can sign up now. Yeah. Okay. Just sign up. You can sign up now. If you're in CLO 1 or 2, you can sign up now. Um, well, as far as uh, the IP addressing, are you going to be handing out public IP addresses? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So or it's a it's a single IP address that gets assigned to the router and then snapped behind the, the gateway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want your own, it's a public. Yeah. It's not. Public. Okay. We we can we can sell static IP addresses. Static IP addresses. It's on the choose. internet as an add-on. Yes. But we're not we're not doing uh, uh, carry grade NAT. If yeah. That's that's so right. Right. Which is what the cell a lot of cell phone companies do. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for all of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I like to do